Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi reporting for The Media Speaks. It's today, the much revered, the highly coveted and super waited for dunce cap of the month award. Guys, there's so many idiots I have for runners-up that this show might go on for a minute. But stay with me, because you would not believe that so many people could be this stupid. And most of them are our leaders and authority figures. Infowars.com, high school blocks access to conservative pro-gun but not liberal websites. This struck me as interesting because what if the child is supposed to do a report on the Second Amendment, but they can't get any Second Amendment information off of the Internet? A Connecticut high school student discovered that his school's website filters block access to conservative, libertarian, and pro-gun websites that but will not allow students to view sites that support gun control, abortion, or the Democratic Party. So they're allowed to view those, I mean. They're allowed to see anything about abortions or gun control and anything with the Democratic Party, but nothing, I guess, even from the conservative parties, if uh, for any reason they you know, mention that we do have a God-given inalienable right to protect ourselves. Noonwaga High School Sonic Wall Internet Filters restrict access to websites for the National Association for Gun Rights, the Connecticut GOP, so the entire uh, Republican Party in Connecticut, Red State, and even Town Hall. On the other hand, students are free to access the home pages of Moms Demand Action, Planned Parenthood, the Connecticut Democratic Party, and the official site of Hillary Clinton. I used to I used my study hall to research gun control facts and statistics. That is when I noticed that most of the pro Second Amendment websites are blocked. Well, the sites that were in favor of gun control generally were not. So, you know, again, not only are they trying to silence us who are correct on this, but also they are making it impossible now for students to even do research. And let's face it, the bigger story here is that we're they're trying to raise an entire generation that doesn't get that this is our God-given inalienable rights. So that's New and Wall High Schools. I have to move on with these friends because there's so many to get to this month. Uh, PrisonPlanet.com. Kit Daniels. Texan told to remove the American flag because it's a threat to Muslims. I would like to take their Sharia law and blow my nose on it. Is that a threat to Muslims? A Texan was told by his apartment manager that he must remove his flag hanging on his patio because it is a threat to the Muslim community. Anybody care? And it Crickets, no, absolutely nobody cares whatsoever, nor do I. Even more, the manager of the lodge on El Dorado in Webster, Texas, released a press release to reporters stating that while management admires our residents' patriotism, they must maintain the aesthetics of our apartment community and provide for the safety of our residents. So, of course, the American flag is also ugly, according to them where the lodge on El Dorado in Webster, Texas. I give you this information so you can call them and let them know how stupid you think they are, by the way. I don't just do this for the hell of it. Somehow, Doitron is a threat to his neighbors, particularly Muslims, for proudly displaying an American flag on his patio. What really stunned me is that she said it's a threat towards the Muslim community, he said to KHOU. It's not a threat toward anybody. Again, if a Muslim is in our country and he likes to be here, welcome aboard. If you want us to be Sharia law, I will happily watch you get deported from the country. I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm not living under Sharia law. It's not happening. What really stunned me, or I read that, he also added that he is not taking the flag down without a fight. I'm going to leave my flag there as an American until she shows me proof that I don't have the right to leave my flag there. I have friends that died for this country. And there's been other instances where this has happened, so look it up. So many dumbies. This is from Mail Online. After Hillary claims the Clintons aren't rich, Chelsea, who is married to a hedge funder, lives in an $11 million home and is paid $600,000 for doing nothing, says I tried to care about money, but I couldn't. I think what she meant to say, and this is why she didn't win the dumb dunce cap of the month, but does get mentioned as a dumb D, is because I think she was trying to say I'm not in love with money, like money isn't my god, I do care about things like 
philanthropy and things like that more. I hope that's what she meant. In any event, it was poorly worded and definitely good for the dumb knee of the day. Chelsea Clinton lives in a charmed life, but not the adults cap of the month. But don't be fooled. Secretly, she's not attached to the oodles of money she and her hedge fund manager husband make each year. The former first daughter said in an interview published over the weekend, philanthropy is her true passion, Clinton said, and that's why she permanently left Wall Street to join the Clinton Foundation, which she runs with her parents, former first couple Bill and Hillary. Um, I was curious if I could care about money on some funda fundamental level, and I couldn't. Clinton told the Telegraph, that wasn't the metric of success that I wanted in my life. So she's trying to say that the amount of money you make, it doesn't define who you are, and that she has money and doesn't love it. I'm saying this because I've read other articles. She wasn't saying that she doesn't care about money, but I included her in the show because, let's face it, it was a stupid thing to say. I don't dislike her, by the way, as much as I like Hillary and Bill. But I'm sure in time I could grow to dislike her just as much. Um, does that mean I want her to be president? No. No. And no. I didn't say I liked her like that. I just said that I thought she was a little more well-grounded. In any event, it was a stupid, idiotic thing to say. You can go to the Daily Mail online and watch the rich girl say that money isn't uh, all that matters. Depends how you want to read it. I've seen worse, especially from the Clintons. I'll, I'll give her a half pass on that one. But, Chelsea, I still want you nowhere in the White House. You shouldn't even be allowed to tour it after what your family did. P-I-N-A-C, uh, Carlos Miller. This photographing is not crime. Woman charged with battery for trying to view deputies' name tag during a traffic stop. Why is it that cops and law enforcement ends up with more dumdies? And more mentions on all things dumb, whether it's the Daily Dumdy or the uh, Dunce Cap of the Month. Why is it? Without fail, you've always got cops doing something like this. They like lead the Dumdy parade or something. And not all cops are bad. We cover the good cops on here all the time. So here we go. San Diego Sheriff's deputies dragged a woman out of her car during a traffic stop, claiming she had battered one of them when all she did was lift his emergency vest to see his name tag. The incident caught on the deputy's body cam, and how could you be so stupid as to do something like this when you're on a body cam, exposes the bullying arrogance that has become the norm these days with law enforcement officers. They truly believe they are untouchable. The video was posted on Facebook on June 17th by Mary Frances Provost, the woman's lawyer, with the following. Friends, this woman was charged with assault on an officer for resisting arrest. She touched... This is what they wrote. She touched, put her finger on his vest, nice writing, to lift it so she could see his name after asking repeatedly. When she touched it, he retreated and said to see assaulted him and was going to jail. It says C, S-E. Do you think this is a battery on an officer or a 148? She was thrown to the ground and severely in injured in San Marcos, California. So there you go, San Diego Sheriff's Deputy. This is where you call to complain. This is why I do the shows. A CBS 8 article two days later stated that Banna Mawaka, M-O-U-W-A-K-E-H, initially pulled over for speeding, was ultimately charged with battery and resisting arrest. The deputy, Augustin Rovos Varian, if you want to call and complain, that's his name, said that he drag, said he had to drag her out of the car and handcuff her because otherwise she may have initiated a pursuit situation endangering her and the general public. But the video doesn't show any of that. So it's surprising they even released the video, which becomes another example of police and they were used to justify their abuse of power. She says repeatedly she asked the deputy for his name and he just ignored her, which he's not allowed to do. And when she reached over and touched him, she was simply trying to see his badge. In the video, you can hear her say she wants his name as the deputy opens the door. So she was in the right. I pleaded with him, I'm going to have hip surgery, and I just had knee surgery. Please, can we just negotiate this, she says. No, of course not. You're in Hitler, America. She says what happened next would cause emotional and physical pain. My right wrist was handcuffed so tightly that it cut off the circulation to my fingers, and I still get numbness in my right hand, she said. As for Deputy Varian, who you should call and complain about, 
in his report, he says Mawaka repeatedly yelled at him when he asked for her license and registration. Well, then you shouldn't be pulling people over. He called the touch willful and unlawful force against him. Well, that's force, yes, because he's a, he's a crotch. She also said she arrested. He also said he arrested her so she couldn't flee the scene. And had he not, she would have initiated a pursuit situation. In other words, he lied. Um, guys, we're gonna go on to the next dummy. This is. Uh, well, where are we going here? We're going in the wrong direction. Did I? I hate pop-ups. How many of you get pop-ups every time you try to uh, try to read something, and then you're all the rest of the time trying to get it to reload? All right, guys. Uh, PrisonPlanet.com, Paul Joseph Watson, 73-year-old veteran threatened with foreclosure for displaying American flag. You may not want to go to Prison Planet for this because they've got this stupid video that plays as soon as you log in. And you guys all know that I call anybody out on that, even Prison Planet. That's annoying. Don't put that on your page. A 73-year-old veteran is being threatened with foreclosure unless he pays an $8,000 fine for displaying a small American flag in a plant pot outside his Sweetwater, Florida home. Oh, my God. Now, how many of these do we have to see? This is a different one. And, by the way, for those who didn't need just cover this, when Larry Murphy placed the stars and stripes in a flower pot on his front porch, he received a letter from the Sweetwater Homeowners Association demanding that he pay the huge fine within 30 days or be slept with a foreclosure lien on his house. Sweetwater Homeowners Association. That's who you want to contact and complain. That's what I'm asking you to do. There's an actual Florida statute that says he can't display this flag. Legal expert Dale Carson told WTEV 47, an opinion backed up by federal law contradicting claims by the HOA that Murphy is in violation of recently rewritten rules concerning flag displays. Local ordinances do not trump constitutional rights. We've covered that on this show before. Murphy has been battling HOA over the issue for more than two years, having already filed a lawsuit against the HOA and settled off court. They settled that case, and I thought it would be the end of it, said Murphy. The veteran is vowing to continue the fight until he is left alone. I have the right to have it there, Murphy told First Coast News. They've got a foreclosure on my house. That's why the flag is upside down. I am hurt and disappointed that they keep going after the American flag and after me. God bless him. However, if you thought the situation didn't sound ludicrous enough, it gets worse. Murphy accuses the HOA of creating a bizarre new rule just to target him, which bans the placing of unauthorized objects in plant pots or foliage. Now they're saying they can go. Now they're saying they can say what can go into a flower pot, and the American flag is an unauthorized object, said Murphy. So you know who to get a hold of there. They're trying to make him pay an $8,000 fine for violation and attorney fees. Murphy is being hit with further penalties of $100 a day for displaying the flag. Only you people listening to this can help this man. Only you guys. You're the only ones. You're it. You guys can help him. I gave you the news. Friends, whatever you do, make sure you look up the work of Mike McLaughlin. You can find his work on Facebook.com. He writes really, really good fiction uh, poetry. He's working on a vampire novel, and he's a proud supporter of The Correct Views. So if you like my show and you like to read, then you can help the show by getting a hold of him. Also, we are now sponsored by the Seacrest Motel. Yes, it is in the Sandusky. Cedar Point, look it up if you doubt me, is always listed as one of the most amazing amusement parks in the country. First of all, it's huge. It takes up a whole peninsula. They've got like 14 coasters, and there's some coasters they don't even count as coasters, but they are, and they're little twirly ones. The Seacrest Motel has rooms for like 50 bucks give or take, depending on uh, when you go. But even now, 50, 60 bucks. You have to call for exact uh, pricing. When you call, say, hi, Vicky. TCV sent me. That's the correct views. Let her know that, and you'll be helping our show. Why are you going to pay hundreds of dollars? And that's what it is. I, I buy season and passes to Cedar Point, friends. I know this firsthand. If you stay at the Breakers, if you stay at the uh, Days in any of those places up there, you're going to get reamed a mile and a half away from the park entrance or something is the Seacrest Motel. So tell them you were referenced there by TCD, and you'll be helping the show. Guys, we got two more dumb before we get to who won the dumb of the day.
Risen Planet Alan Salazar, New Jersey CPS, threatens to confiscate pencil twirling student from dad. We've already covered uh, last year the Dunce Cap of the Month, and then, of course, the Dunce Cap of the Year ended up going to CPS for uh, taking a child away from pot smokers who weren't harming anybody, putting them in a house of previous drug dealers who killed the child. Well, not to be outdone, and we got Jersey here, a New Jersey dad fears that the state may soon confiscate his son, all because the 13-year-old had the audacity to twirl a pencil in class. I'm like non-stop twirling. I'm one of those fidgety people that cannot sit still. People have uh, made me crazy in my life, and now I'm unable to sit still. And at 13, they were making me crazy enough that I was like that then. So I completely understand it. Maybe, you know, the state should have whisked me away. I guess you don't twirl a pen. Seventh grade student Ethan Chaplin thought his troubles were over. His name was cleared after one of his peers reported to a Glen Meadow middle school teacher. He had been twirling a pencil like a gun. How do you twirl a pencil like a gun? I know how to do that. I wish I had a pen with me. I can flip it on the outside of my thumb, but twirling it this way like a gun, I highly doubt it. I think what he was doing was that little pen thing that I do, and I'm, I can't find it. But I, you take a pen and you can flip it around your thumb. Nothing like a gun. If you twirl a gun this way, you're probably going to shoot yourself in the chest. He's making gun motions. Send him to juvie. Ethan's troublemaking colleague explained that Ethan was quickly ushered to the principal's office where he was decided that he should be suspended and that to be safe, he should probably have his head examined. Oh, of course, of course. That makes perfect sense in Nazi America. We never knew, we never know what's percolating in the minds of children, Vernon School Superintendent Charles Maranzano said in an interview, defending the, pupil, the principal's actions. And when they demonstrate behaviors that raise, raise red flags, we must do our duty. So call Vernon School Superintendent Charles Maranzano and ask him how um, those actions raise red flags, such as twirling a pen. Ethan's father, however, being of sound mind and having a firm grasp on, re grasp on reality, refused to acquiesce to the principal's wishes. Others agreed after Ethan's story received extensive media coverage, as it should have. Following the controversy, Ethan's dad, Michael, received a letter from the school superintendent saying no disciplinary action would be taken, but that didn't stop the New Jersey Department of Children and Family Families, so call the New Jersey Department of Children and Families and complain for issuing him a letter that stating Ethan was harmed or placed in the risk of harm. I received a letter from them saying that they found an incident of abuse or neglect regarding Ethan because I refused to take him for a psychological evaluation. So because he wouldn't get his head examined, his son's head examined for twirling a pen, and they want to take his kid away. That was real close to winning. CNS News, Mexican Embassy, Mexicans illegally crossing the border are not committing a crime. Friends, I counted incorrectly. I'm looking at one of the ads that came up. That is the Dundee of the Month. The Dunce Cap of the Month award is going to Mexican Embassy. Listen to this. How could you not win the Dundee of the Award for this? How could you not do it? MRC TV talks to protesters calling for the release of U.S. Marine Andrew Taha Moresi outside the Mexican Embassy where a spokesman for the Mexican embassy tells them that illegal border crossing is not committing a crime. So smoking weed illegally does not make you a criminal. Not filling your taxes out illegally and filing them does not make you a criminal. When a Mexican or any other citizen crosses the border, let's say illegally, they are not committing a crime. Yes, you can do things illegally without committing a crime, I guess. They are doing it illegally, but they are not committing a crime. No, they are not. Check your law. Public Affairs Minister Ariel Mustastos Morales says, Dude, learn one thing. We don't want a bunch of people in our country here undocumented. How's that? But, friends, that was too stupid to not get the Dunce Cap of the Month award. So I made the Dunce Cap here, and I've got written on it, uh, Illegal is, in English and German, I-L-L-E-G-A-L. -L -E Illegal. I-L-E-G-A-L in Spanish, and on and on and on. The hat's full of different ways to say the world ir illegal in all kinds of different languages. He's getting that mailed to them, him, them, and they're also getting this beautiful 
Don't scalp of the month award. Look at that. That's that's beautiful. And here's what it says. The Don't Scalp of the Month. This award goes to you, foolish people at the Mexican Embassy, for being too dull of mind to understand the definition of even basic words such as, but in no way limited to, illegal, criminal, and invasion. Perhaps you at the Mexican Embassy have yourselves not mastered the English language enough to grasp that, according to Webster, illegal is defined as against law. Contravening a specific law, especially a criminal law, which would make it a crime. The English word criminal is made up of the English word crime, I wrote, thus saying that that which is against the law is in fact illegal. Imagine that. Therefore, while Public Affairs Minister Ariel Musatos Morales says that Mexicans illegally crossing the U.S. border are not committing a crime, all people of all races who enter a nation illegally are in fact guilty of a crime. This is basic knowledge to anyone with both a working mind and an ability to take even child level English and apply it to real life. Since you at the Mexican Embassy seem not at all able to do either, you win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award for July 2014. Please do try to learn the language I wrote, friends, and there you go. The Dunce Cap of the Month, another month of July 2014 is in the bag. I'm going to put even more, uh, even more uh, illegal. Illegal is the same in so many languages, so when you put it on the hat, it's even funnier. Friends, thank you for listening. Share this video. Call the people that I called out on this show and let them know how stupid you think they are. And uh, make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. You can donate to the show at the correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny you give me goes to a better show. And you can look up my works, Risen, The Lucky Leprechaun, and the novel Sleep Unknowing at Amazon.com. Good night, friends. And thank you for watching the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. And above all else, God bless.